Hello everyone! This is a continuation to see if my predictions were true for my previous video that Crescent Pike should be better than Dragon Spine. We're going to see how a real Rosaria performs with these weapons so let's not waste any time and get started. From my last video, I made a predictions video using Xiangling's data that Crescent Pike is going to be better than Dragon Spine, and a few things came up that people were wondering about that might have impacted the results, so we're going to build onto those as well. The first one is, Rosaria has a longer duration for her combos compared to Xiangling. Will that have an impact on the results? So I timed myself on how fast I could do combos with Rosaria. Originally, I was going to do 3 cycles of auto attacks and then average it out, but coincidentally when I did finish doing the 3 cycles with animation cancels, I did it in 10 seconds which was a dragon spine cooldown for the icicle. Hence, this is how much damage you will be doing with both abilities of Crescent Pike and the Icicle. We can be more realistic and take into account the activation of the particles. You receive the particles approximately 2 seconds after the skill has activated. Hence, you'll be able to use your skill again 1 second before Crescent's ability expires to restart it, meaning you will have 9 out of the 10 seconds active for your ability. Let's be skeptical and give you room for error and say you have it only active for 8 out of the 10 seconds. With this assumption, you can see that Crescent Pike's ability is still significantly better. But wait, Sensei, what if I have R5 for both? Surely Dragon Spine will eventually be better by this point, right? Okay, so let's say both weapons are R5 for now. But the results that I've attained were that Crescent Pike's ability is still way better. Okay, Sensei, so the ability might be bad, but how is the weapon? Here are the stats, and unfortunately, Crescent Pike's stats are still better than the Dragon Spine Spear stats when we take into account just the main stats themselves of the artifacts. <laughs> well, Sensei, this is unrealistic because substats is going to matter, and the Dragon Spine's physical damage modifier is so much higher, so it's much different when substats are involved. <sighs> Fine, we'll take a look at the substats as well. After some time of playing around with the numbers, I've determined that this is the best theoretical emphasis on theoretical possible build you can have for this specific Rosaria when you are maximizing DPS. To summarize how to look at this, every artifact has to have an initial boost of 1, which is the base stat that you're starting with, and you can have an additional 5 boosts spread out at level 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20 through these 3 to 4 stats involved. The reason it's 3 to 4 is that you cannot have the same subset as your main stat. This is assuming you have the best tier rolls to obtain these exact stats. To be honest, you probably would have to win the lottery a couple of times before getting these exact stats for your artifacts. Hence, this is why I emphasize best theoretical possible build. It is possible to get this actual build, it is just extremely difficult because of the hatred of RNG gods in MiHoYo's game. However, let's see if your god tier artifacts makes a difference and oh, hey look, Crescent Pike is still better by a pretty large margin. You, 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 you know what? Let's make the gap even bigger. Let's increase our crit damage and just take into account a Regina Probation M as well, just to make it worse. Now, as I was working with this data, I was surprised because I never put anything on the attack percent because I was trying to think of the golden ratio as I was doing these adjustments, but I'm assuming the physical damage percent modifier had an impact on how the ratios would be adjusted for Rosaria. Of course, I know some of you are going to be arguing about this, is that Dragon Spine still might be better because this build only focuses on crit damage and crit rate. We should be taking into account of attack percent as well. Alright, so to appease those people who are doing this argument for some weird reason, I have no idea why you would go for this attack percent build, but yeah, I took a look at that as well, and unfortunately, Crescent Pike is still better. And, and, and you, know, you know what? Heck, I even converted a crit rate build and converted it into an attack percent build. And somehow, we're going to assume you encounter a bug and that allowed you to have attack percent on your attack percent circlet because I felt like it would still get across the message that I think you're all aware of, which is that Crescent Pike is still better. Some of you might be wondering, what, 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 Sensei, why is this the case? The base attack gap really does make a huge difference. The difference of almost 100 points between Crescent Pike and Dragon Spike makes a significant difference that Crescent Pike, in almost all cases, is unfortunately always going to be a better spear than Dragon Spine Spear for Rosaria. Ah, <sighs> Yosha. I feel like I've covered almost all ends that Crescent Pike is just better than Dragon Spine almost all the time. I even helped Dragon Spine Spear, I don't know how many of you have noticed it, that I just assumed that the Icicle will always be active 100% of the time, even though that's not the case, unless I think I believe if it's R5. Well, I hope this video was helpful for all of you. Give it a like if it did, and share this video with the Dragon Spine Spear believers so they understand that Crescent Pike is just a way to go. And hopefully I will see all of you Crescent Pike believers in the next video.